I look a lot better in that picture. <laughs> it was taken on my kitchen countertop, no lies. Okay, so I made it to a life I didn't want. I, what I wish I knew before I started over. So I was, I started in the advertising industry in 2001. I'd studied for three years before that. And it was my life. I worked so hard at this thing. Day and night, I never went into the sun. I'm really tanned now because I have a lot more time. Um, <laughs> and it was everything I wanted. And it was, um, it was a life that was, you know, you're a rock star, you're in it. Um, it was, um, it was actually, when I think back, because I don't have fond memories of it, but when I think back, it, it was, you know, you, you put ads on TV, you become famous, it's great, you, and I did everything from day one going to Ogilvy and being in Joburg for 10 years and you drive to the agency and you're like really, really nervous, are you going to crack it? And 10 years of that, you kind of work through it. And, and I went, I worked myself up to what everybody said success was. It was, okay, you've won the awards, you're driving the fast car, you, you in your business suit with your heels. This was it. It was everything. But then what happened was the life you want versus the position in the company. Um, I had made it. I had made it to a place that I, uh, what, what life said success was, what society says success is. And that was everything to me. I thought, okay, that's it. I've got there. I've, I've, I've worked to... Hold on. Let me just... I'm really nervous this morning. I'm oh. usually this nervous. <laughs> Give me a clap. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why. I think that's here. I'm really nervous talking about this, but let me get to it. So, the life you want versus the position in the company. I thought life and, and success was making it to where you need to get to. So, I had worked up from a junior art director to a midweight art director to a senior art director, to a group head, to a creative director, an executive creative director. It's the highest you can go. In, in, the ad, in the ad world. It is, it's like the MD of a business. So I thought, yes, this is it. I've won the best award in the world, a Cannes Grand Prix. That is, I should, be, I should be killing it. I should be absolutely happy with everything. But somebody asked me a question, and, and I wasn't happy, because I think what we are led to believe is that you have a work life, and then you have the life after work. Go to work, you make money, and money will give you the things that you want to do and you want to buy. That's a common concept. But why doesn't it make us happy? Why wasn't it making me happy? I could buy the things. I could drive the car. You know, I didn't look at prices. Now I know that eggs at checkers are cheaper than eggs at pick and pay. Seriously. <laughs> They're 36 Rand, guys. Don't pay 56 for 18 eggs. Seriously. So, and it was a question that a friend asked me, and it was a pivotal change in my life. And he asked me, he said, Julie, can you think of any executive creative director's life you want to live? And I was like, let me think about it. There was nobody's. There was nobody's life that I wanted to live. They had big houses, they had fast cars, but they left those big houses to get in their fast car to go to work at 8.30 in the morning. And then they'd be at work at 5 o'clock, sometimes like at 8 o'clock they leave, they get home for their family. And they're supposed to be successful, and we're all supposed to go like, woo that's great. I mean, I, I heard cheers in my head when I, worked, when I, when I walked into, into the office. Julie, Julie, Julie. I was in my heels, I was in my suits, I had my briefcase put my keys on the table, look at me. And when I said there was nobody's life that I wanted to live in advertising, in, in, in the ECD, the executive creative director's position, that's when I thought, hold on, there's, there's another way of looking at the society hasn't taught us properly. And that's what got me thinking, and that's what got me to leave 12 years of advertising 
and start again, completely again. And how was I going to think about how I start again? And what then, if society is not right about work life, social life, then what is it that we create? And then what do we put our filters against? And that's where I say, find your filters. Your filters are not what society said, be successful, earn money, study. I mean, studying is great. I'm not saying don't study, but the filter for me was get the card, get the job, win the awards in my life. Those were my filters. So I'd actually put the wrong filters in my life. So everybody's filters are going to be different. Your filters may be spending more time with your family or being able to knit or crochet anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. That's living your life. High five. Like, honestly, <laughs> love it. But there are my filters where I hated being told what to do. It's a weakness. But think back being a kid, actually, you... You have, to, you have to ask me if you can go on leave, because i got 20 years, or managerial position, 20, not 13. And you have to go at this time. All of that stuff was crazy, and it was completely against. My cell phone, honestly, when it rang, I knew there was somebody that needed something from me. It sounded like the Jaws soundtrack. Like, dun dun It didn't sound like any Apple ringtone there was. It was making me terribly unhappy. So my filters have been like, okay, how can I work from anywhere? I don't want to have to sit in traffic. This morning was horrendous. There's traffic on the roads at this time on a Friday. I don't want to have to sit in traffic. I want to be able to work from anywhere in the world. I, what other things? Um, money, I don't want to, um, money to be made by the time I spend. So a lot of us, have to go in, we work for eight hours, we get paid this much. So if we get sick, we don't make money. Hopefully we've got an insurance policy, but we don't make money. So how can time not equal money? Like doctors and lawyers, they all think they're very fancy. But you know what? They work by the hour. They charge a lot of money, but they work by the hour. So what could I create that, that gave me freedom? Those are my filters. I think if you find yours that are true to you, might be the start of just steering in a new direction. Okay, so I know that sounded easy, but it's taken three websites in seven years to go from launching my company, leaving the ad industry, I did that. And I did that, Philip was, I was briefly saying, it's very industry specific for the ad industry, and it's where the industry can go, the advertising industry can go to find a director, an editor, somebody, music and sound, to make our commercials, to make our print ads, animators. Those, and, and it connects the industry. It's simply, simply that. That's what it is. I had to start that online because my filter said I want to work from anywhere. So I can't go start a, a shop. And I would say if you're going to start your own business, maybe not start a shop. Um, if your filter is you want more freedom. But if it's not that, if you start a shop, I mean, don't start like a video shop. It's not going to work. <laughs> yeah? Just a hint. Don't start a video shop or a post office. But from, from doing that and the last seven years, these are the things that I wish I knew starting my business. Because I started an online business, I was very good at building brands. I was very good at playing the game. You know, we learn how to play the game in our industry. We become good at it. I'm a woman. I had to play the game twice as hard as anyone else to get to the top. Girls, you know. Guys. <laughs> Your time is over. <laughs> um, but these are the things that I wish I knew. I had about 50 or 60 of these things. Literally, it was taking all my post-its and, and just what are the 10 or 11 that I think are the most, the biggest lessons for me? That is so familiar to me now. Like, I just know that stuff. And I wish that these 10 or 11 or 12 things I knew before I started. It was online. And I thought, oh, it's easy, Julie. Oh, you're building your brand. I knew nothing. So <laughs> a lot of the stuff that relates to online, it's all going that way. 
Um, but these things can relate to your new video store. Your idea must serve a pain. And what I mean by that is a pain is something that somebody will go, oh, it frustrates me when I have to do that. It's painful. I hate having to do that. Those are, those are pains. Your idea must serve a pain. It must solve that pain. So you can't go, you know what, I've got a great idea for, a, for sponges, kitchen sponges that are the color of your kitchen. Great idea. Somebody's obsessed about black and white, I can now buy a black sponge. We all think it's great. And your friends will go, oh my gosh, that's a great idea. But when you ask them to spend some money on it, they're like, well, I'm fine with the yellow sponge. <laughs> so I think whenever you hear an idea or if you have an idea, always think about what's the pain I am solving? What is the pain I'm taking away? Then you've got an idea. People pay for pains. They don't pay for nice ideas. They really don't. So I think... If you look at I did that, the pain was, and I was in the industry, it was painful for me. Daisya, she will know. Producer with directors. Ten years ago, we had, they used to send out CDs that had the reels on them. I don't even have a CD in my laptop. There's no CD plays in this laptop. So then they got clever and memory sticks to get it in to the agencies. But then I would just have this memory stick. I'd have like 20 memory sticks. There was no place to find all the directors, all the directors' work, all the companies, all the animators in one place, like a yellow pages at Google. It was painful. We'd have to phone the producer, hi, please can you send me the reel, wait for the reel. We don't have time like that. So that's the pain that we're solving. So stick true to that and find your pain. Use feedback loops and, and pivot. What I mean by this is if you start your business, everybody thinks it's really star, uh, smart to have a five-year plan. 90-page document. Guys, look at my business plan. This is smart. I am smart. I know what I'm doing in five years. I'm going to go this way, and then we're going to launch that, and I'm going to go that way, and then we're going to launch this, and I'm going to go that way. It's called waterfall. It works like this. It seems smart, but it's not smart. You have to use feedback loops, and what I mean by pivot is like we go this way, then we go this way, then we go this way. So you start with your idea. You know the pain, you start with your idea. You get to a, a place in your business, three months, you set your feedback loops. You assess everything that's being done. Then you feed back. You ask yourself, okay, are people responding to this? What are they not responding to? Do we need to adjust? If you need to adjust, you feed back, and you go off in this direction. If you don't need to adjust, you come back on the same line, you high-five each other. <laughs> Honestly, you'll, you will need to adjust. There's always something. I started my company thinking, OK, I will put, allow people to upload their portfolio. They can add their, so they create a profile, they upload their portfolio, the industry will come and find them, only people. And I'll offer it for free, and when there's enough people, I will charge them for it. Fantastic. I'm so clever. <laughs> no. Today, we don't even list individuals. We only list companies. And within the companies, there are directors. Within the post-production, there are editors. Only companies. And that's many pivots over seven years. Four years not making enough money to survive, working two jobs. So it was finding the business. And that's what feedback loops will do and pivoting. The other thing that we do, and, and I did this, is don't give it away when you're excited. So this is what happens, right? I'm like, let me tell you my idea. Sorry, what's your name? Bill Keys. Bill Keys. Bill Keys, let me tell you my idea. It's fantastic. And I tell, uh, say, oh, we're going to create sponges. Oh. Black and white sponges. Any color. And you're like, you know what's great? We add a scourer. Ah. And I'm like, that's fantastic. Let's go 50-50. <laughs> when you're excited, you yeah. give it away. Yeah. Do you know what 50-50 means? Yeah. You're 
<laughs> That's really what it means. So, more companies fail because the partners fall to pieces. Because I'm working harder than you're working. I left the industry, you're still in your job. You're earning a salary, I'm running the company. What are you doing? The general rule that I go by, if you're ever going to give up a bit of your business, is three times rule. If I give you 20% of my business, you must be able to, with our partnership, grow the business by 60%. So the whole business is more valuable. So your 80% your is worth more than if you had 100%. So be very careful when you're excited to give it away. If you say Skyros, I'm like, that's a fantastic idea. I'll write that down. <laughs> Don't. And if they're like, well, you must pay me for that. Cool, when it's profitable, come let's write it on a tissue. When it's profitable, I'll give you 10,000 rand. They'll still be happy. So that's a big lesson, and it took me a year I started with partners, I gave shares because I didn't have money. He had the connections. Well, actually, he was the person that could do what I could do. He could switch it on. So I knew I had to get that. But I put in more. The developer was a year over time. I was waiting a year. He was a year late on version two of the site. That's a lot of money because you cannot implement the next business model. So I nearly threw everything away. That was a very dark time, but I got 100% ownership and I still own 100%. And that is because of my filters. What I realized is I wasn't true to it. I didn't want anybody telling me what to do. So you don't have somebody you have to answer to. What did you do today on the business? No, no, no. But you may need that. You may need a partner. First to market spends the most money. So if you start your business and it's completely new, something new, it's not a, a, a video store or sponges. If it's new tech or something new, don't be scared if somebody goes to market before you. The first person to market, market will spend the most money. Just watch them. Learn from them. So don't go like, sherbet, it's been done and head out of there. Watch it because there might be something they're missing, how they're billing. I might have to go to pick and pay to get the sponges, but maybe your model is people don't want to go to pick and pay to get a sponge, it costs more than petrol. I'm going to send the sponge with the bin bags. Maybe a different way, you might solve a different problem, so don't be scared of that. And there were many times that somebody would try and start something quite similar. And I remember the pain, I mean, I would, not sleep at night. Like, I cannot believe this is happening until I just calmed down and watched. And if it's working, adopt it. They've spent the money doing the research. Alone versus alone. So money. These are, these are, these are the hard things. The loneliness of having your own business and sometimes the money, actually all the time, the money you need. And I think how you raise money, you need to be very careful of. So what we spoke about earlier, when you're starting your business, you do feel alone. You feel like you need to, to bounce stuff off somebody. So you, you get a partner and that's not bringing you three times the value, your friend. Um, or alone, you go, and, and this happened, I was three, year, uh, three years into the business I'd had two site developments that never went to market. It was a really hard, dark, dark, dark time. There was, I mean, I was at the bottom of the barrel and there was, I just couldn't see the light at all. I really couldn't. And I nearly gave in because people dangle some lovely carrots, investors, some lovely carrots. So you've got to decide and you've got to, you've got to know what it is that you want. If you have less money, if you're raising your own money, it will take longer. If your business can afford to take longer to grow, then take longer if you want 100% ownership. Raise your money from friends and family if you can. 
you know, put some lovely little strategy together, get them excited. If they really believe in it and it serves a pain, they'll probably give you some money. If it's a nice idea, they'll be like, oh, somebody's calling. You know? But it is, it is, it is lonely. It really is. And, and I think where I am now, it's almost like childbirth. It's awful. Never had a child. But I've heard from people, it's awful. And about two years in, you forget about that. You're like, let's have another one. <laughs> so that's where I am. I'm like, oh, let's start another company. When, when three years ago, I said, never do this. Stay in the office. Drive in the traffic. It's awful. But it's worth it today. It really is. Listen to feedback, but don't take it all on. So it's a common thing that we do. We listen to the negative stuff. And it like scratches at our eyes. I'll send out a newsletter. 3,000 people will open it. One person unsubscribes. And I go straight there, who was that? <laughs> who unsubscribed? Who hates me? What are we not doing right? Phone Sarah, it works out I did that. We have to change everything. Somebody unsubscribed. But feedback, I mean, that's a, that's a joke. It's not really a joke. I do. I do get really upset. Nobody unsubscribed from my mailers. Feedback's important because I think we're told to, oh, if somebody doesn't like it, we must defend it. Yeah. I'll defend it. What do you mean? Uh, let me show you why this does work. But feedback is important because it guides your feedback loops. So listen, if you're not defending, you're listening. And another way, and this actually happened in the ad industry, and it, and it helped me today, for the designers in the room. You know, you show a piece of work, and you say, what do you think? You know the person that you've asked, what do you think, is just as scared as you? They don't want to go, she's going to hate me. Yeah. <laughs> How do I tell her this is all <laughs> You don't. You go, it's great. Then you walk away and you're like. <laughs> so you want to get honest feedback. There's a way to get honest feedback. You show them the work and you say, how would you make this better? Because I'm open. And now you're thinking not she's going to hate me or what do I say? You're thinking, how can I help this person? And you're open and they're open. Some of the best things have come from that. I have developed a whole new business strategy on a piece of feedback. It was early days. We were listing just individuals could list portfolios. And the companies were going, why can't I add my, my work as a company, as an agency, just the directors? I'm doing the work too. It didn't go like, well, guys, you get enough credit. Stop right there. I listened. And I was like, wow, that's enough of a pain. They'll pay. <laughs> they will pay some money. It worked. Assumptions are not facts. So we assume things that we know. I assumed in the beginning of this presentation that I'd be totally calm. I knew what I was talking about. Completely fell apart. There's a lot of people here. I'm very hot. Okay. You cannot assume anything of your audience. So when you think of, okay, they will upload their portfolio to I did that, or they will want a black sponge, list that as an assumption. These are my assumptions. This is what I need to test. Once you've tested them enough, then they become facts. Those are the things you know. So only build anything in your business on the facts, not what you assume. You'll, you will spend far less time and far less money if you just do that little bit before. But it's, it's scary. You've got these things you just want to build. You want to get on to the next thing. Now you've got to go and ask people. But really do it. I spent a lot of money building on an assumption. I'm sure I could have done this in five years. Seven years is ridiculous. I only started making a profit last year. It was drawing even. 
So fail fast. I didn't want to word it this because everybody says, oh, fail fast. It's so boring. But I think it's also how we, how we get our mind ready, like feedback loops, like assumptions, how we get our mind ready and against what society, this whole thing's about forget what society has said. They go, you fail, you're a loser. So we get scared of failing. We put something on, we hide away. They'll come around. They'll like it. I think if you can go, right, I'm launching something, how quickly can I prove this is failing? And you're okay with failing, then you grow faster. Your feedback loops are like this, not like this. You want to get to where you need to get to quickly. Fail fast and be proud of failing. I failed. I failed. I failed so many times in this business, thinking I could do online. I drove developers crazy. My first website design was in InDesign to a developer. I was like, make it look like this. <laughs> On paper, printed it out. Make it look like this. Didn't understand what he was saying. So many times, assumptions, feedback loops. It's been dark and lonely. I didn't have anybody so working by myself. I hadn't employed anyone yet. But if you can get back up and, and, and not be scared of failing, it's so much easier. And tell people. You ask entrepreneurs about their business. You know the ones I'm interested in when they tell me. It's not when, it, when they go, it's amazing. They're two years in. I know it's not amazing. <laughs> Nobody's business is amazing two years in. It's amazing. Guys, it's great. It's so successful. When they can go, damn it, hey? It's tough just about to break even. Those are the people I go, come, let's chat. I can be a mentor. I had mentors. I don't think I'm good enough to be a mentor just yet. I use people that have been in this 20, 30 years. And when you feel lonely, sometimes it is great to get a mentor. There are so many people in Cape Town, this is big tech vibe happening here, that are doing well and you ask them for their opinion, you say, can you be a mentor for me? They don't want anything from you. They don't want shares. They'll give you your time because they know it will be returned back to them. And I think if you've got your filters right, because this process can be long, your filters will keep you focused. I was at the lowest point about three years in, Two years of development that had not gone live. I was still on the old site. I was having to work off the site, building blog pages, doing craft awards off the site. All of that. And it was okay because I was, I was remembering my filters. So when somebody said, Julie, you know what? Get back into advertising. I've got a great job. You're going to run this agency. We are going to pay you a lot of money. And I thought about the car that I now have because I had to sell, sell the fancy sports car. Literally went from getting out of a car this low to now getting out a very practical car. And it was totally worth it because you have to cut all your costs, get rid of your bills. The less money you have to spend, the more freedom you have to build your business. And like, okay, I haven't made much this month. How am I going to pay for this and this and this and this? But your filters will keep you focused. So when somebody does offer you a lot of money for 10%, you go, oh, yes, I can maybe build faster. I can start my company faster. But when I get to the end, I'm not going to be in control. I'm going to answer to somebody. So you say no. If somebody offers you a job for a lot of money, you know that money wasn't the filter. Of course you want to make money. I only earn now. Today, I pay myself a salary that I was making in the industry, relative, seven years later. But I love my life. I work from, uh, from home. Sarah, who works for I did that, hey. <laughs> she works out of agencies. I don't go into an office. We Skype each other or call each other. I can work from anywhere in the world. Driving here was the first time I've driven in morning traffic 
in about six months. Other time was for dentist. <laughs> it was horrendous. But when I say I like my life, I'm not talking about my work life and my social life. I'm talking about the life and freedom I have. My phone, some days I switch off. Don't want a digital day. And I'm not, I'm not trying to say, oh, my life's amazing, yours sucks. Yeah. I'm really not. But I'm trying to show you it can be done. And I truly believe it's the filters and really knowing those. Take some time on them. And knowing what you're going towards. And it's not what society said. Mic drop. <laughs>